Hello, everybody. Welcome to the webinar. Today, I'll be discussing PJR FSI's Cannabis Safety Standard for Manufacturing. My name is Lauren Maloney, and I'm the Food Safety Program Accreditation Manager for Perry Johnson Registrar's Food Safety, Inc. We are headquartered in Troy, Michigan, and we are part of a family of companies in the registration and certification areas. We have global offices in Italy, UK, Japan, Mexico, China, and India. And PJR FSI offers a wide range of food safety certifications from HACCP to GFSI, organic, and gluten-free. Recently, we've added a, a cannabis safety standard and our program has become accredited by ANSI ANAB. So why does food safety matter in the cannabis industry? Food safety is the production of safe food that will not make the consumer sick from ingesting it. Today, we will explore the reason why food safety and cannabis product safety is so important. The cannabis industry is like the Wild West. It seems like new inventive cannabis infused products are popping up everywhere. Cannabis infused drinks, gummies, powders, chocolate, coffee, lotion, tinctures, and even dog treats are some of the products that are currently sold. Manufacturers have the responsibility to receive, store, display, and sell uh, marijuana flower and marijuana products safely. This means implementing the appropriate controls, ensuring that cannabis safety is properly implemented, takes a commitment from everyone in the company, from upper management to the production employees. The U.S. government is responsible for setting food safety standards. Meat and poultry fall under USDA, while produce and other manufacturers, manufactured foods fall under FDA. These regulatory bodies also conduct inspections and enforce the laws that are applicable. Furthermore, food processors must follow any state or local regulations and licensing. However, marijuana is not federally legal, and so regulations up to the states to define requirements as well as the agency that will enforce those requirements. The marijuana legality by state is ever changing. Each year, more states are legalizing medical or recreational marijuana and the manufacture of marijuana infused products. 11 states, as well as the District of Columbia, have made recreational or adult use of marijuana legal. Additional 33 states have legalized medical marijuana, and a few more states have decriminalized it. Hemp legality by state uh, became law with the 2018 Farm Bill, and so that hemp could be grown by all states legally if they submit a um, hemp, cult, uh, hemp uh, cultivation plan to the USDA for benchmarking, or if they um, adopt the USDA's plan. This has made the manufacture of hemp products uh, on the market seen a huge increase and in turn, the hemp product safety is extremely important. The lack of conformity between state regulations add to the confusion of this ever growing and changing marketplace. State agencies split up the responsibility of managing different aspects of, of cannabis. If an agency doesn't understand or enact requirements to make safe products, how do consumers know what they are ingesting? 
we are slowly seeing more and more legalization, but that is, it's going to take time before it's federally legal. And while we're waiting, medical or while we're waiting, marijuana products are being grown, produced, and consumed. Food safety in the cannabis industry is important because it's only legal in select states and not regulated federally like food and drugs. Cannabis cultivation and product manufacture is not enforced by FDA or state, USDA. Instead, the safety of the products are enforced through state appointed divisions, which can vary even by county. The consumers of medical marijuana or recreational marijuana may uh, be a part of a vulnerable population. Products have varying label claims for med medical benefits. And without proper testing, higher than in intended levels of CBD or THC could cause unwanted effects. Marijuana flour and cannabis products are not free from product recalls, much like our food products and drugs. Cannabis can be recalled for food safety issues like molds and yeast, pathogens, pesticides, and heavy metals. Without rigorous controls in place, it's easy to make mistakes and make someone sick in the process. Recalls can be costly. Dispos disposal of contaminated products, product is expensive, and settling lawsuits for harming or killing a consumer is even more so. Marijuana raw material concerns include mycotoxins, pesticides, chemical residues, and contamination from water, pests, and humans. These are a few things that cannabis safety must take into consideration. Food pathogens and food allergens can also be extremely de deadly. Improper allergen labeling is a huge reason for recalls of food products. When a cannabis edible also contains an allergen such as chocolate nut bar or soy or dairy products, then proper allergen handling practices must be implemented. Good manufacturing practices are the first defense from food pathogens. Proper hygiene and sanitation practices are important to reduce the risk of the contamination. Cannabis packaging regulation is ever-changing. From recreational to medical marijuana, the rules and regulations are extremely specific and strict. It is important to not only make sure you follow all the packaging requirements, such as child-proof and tamper-proof packaging, but it is also important to consider the food safety aspect of packaging and labeling as well. Consideration should be given to type of packaging used. It is, traditionally used, is it traditionally used for a food product? Is the marijuana product contacting the packaging? And if so, are there risks for chemical migration? Finally, the labeling of products is extremely important, not only to meet state labeling requirements, but to ensure the information is correct and accurate. What logos and symbols can I use on the labels and what warning must be printed? It is also important to label any poten potential allergens so consumers can be informed, especially if it's not obvious by looking at the product. Now I'd like to talk more about cannabis, cannabis certification, audit types and steps to certification. Third party certification is independent of state or federal regulation or inspection. Third party is a private certification scheme that provides auditing and certification to a recognized set of food, food safety or cannabis safety standards. Many of the safety standards are based off of the FDA's good manufacturing practices and Codex Alimentarius Hazard Analysis and Critical Control Points, or HACCP. Often, often larger food manufacturers, such as grocery stores, require all of their suppliers to have third-party certification. This is an additional requirement beyond what is, is asked by the U.S. government. Third-party certification builds on regulatory requirements, adding additional procedures, processes, and controls 
to help ensure that food and cannabis products are safe. PJR can offer a few different types of food safety and cannabis safety audits. First is our own cannabis safety standard. This can be used for marijuana manufacture uh, of products, including both food and non-food products like lotions and concentrates. For manufacturing companies that are looking to get a step up, then GFSI benchmark audits are available. SQF allows audits in Canada for CBD and marijuana edibles. However, SQF does not allow certification in the U.S. due, due to not, the products not being federally legal. BRC will allow certification for food products only. This does include CBD products and concentrates uh, as long as they're going into food products and not personal care or smokable. And FSSC does not recognize cannabis products in their scope. So what are the benefits to certification? Without federal regulation and lack of state oversight or in-depth requirements, certification can help mitigate risks to public health and safety. Certification can allow companies to promote their products with more confidence in their safety. It can help to increase consumer confidence. Consumers are even more unfamiliar with cannabis legislation and requirements. Certification can increase consumer confidence and help companies rise above the competition. Finally, it can help reduce recalls, save money, and save lives. PJR FSI can offer a pending letter of certification for all of our contracted clients. This letter states your schedule and timeline for certification. This allows your customers to see you're working with an accredited certification body and it shows a commitment to your cannabis safety, to your stakeholders, employees, and potential customers. What are the steps to certification? PJR FSI can provide a free quote. Once you contract with PJR FSI, we'll then provide the pending letter. After you, after you review and implement your cannabis safety system, we schedule the audit. Typically the auditor will, will, will re, re, Excuse me. Typically, the auditor will review three months of records. Prior to the audit, we can schedule a pre-assessment. This is an optional audit to identify any gaps in your program. We are able to identify the gaps, but we cannot consult or tell you to how to fix them. For that, you would need a consultant. Our project managers are able to refer you to a consultant if need be. The next step is to conduct the audit. Your auditor will conduct the audit on site and in the time of COVID, there are opportunities to conduct a virtual or partial, partially virtual audit. This will depend uh, on review of your current system and whether that a virtual audit can be effective. The auditor will go through all of the requirements by reviewing records and procedures, interviewing employees, inspecting the production process and facility. If the auditor sees any nonconformity, they will document it and those will will need to be corrected to achieve certification. After the audit is finished, you will have 30 days to implement any corrective action for the nonconformities observed. Once this is completed and accepted by your auditors, PGRFSI Executive Committee will review and make the certificate decision. Finally, PGRFSI will issue the certificate. Now let's take a look into the PJR FSI Cannabis Safety Standard. PGR FSI Cannabis Safety Standard is applicable for cannabis product manufacturers, and it's based off of FDA's 21 CFR Part 117 GMP, or Good Manufacturing Practices, and state-specific requirements. The requirements reference um, the requirements reference cannabis safety, uh, cannabis safety contact surfaces, and kind of cannabis safety packaging. Uh, but it includes both edible products as well as a topical or a concentrate. How do you be audit ready? How can you be audit ready for the cannabis safety standard? 
Well, like I said before, you can schedule a pre-assessment or gap analysis prior to your certification audit. This will not only allow you to identify gaps in your system, but you will be able to have an understanding of the process of the certification audit. It is essential that you review the standard and implement those requirements. The auditor's checklist is taken directly from the standard and will be, and they will be auditing to those requirements. Employees will need to be trained and implementing cannabis safety is everyone's responsibility from top management to production line employee. Training is essential. Specific food safety and cannabis safety training is needed, especially for those employees that come in contact with the product. An internal audit, if you conduct an internal audit, you will then be able to identify any gaps or deficiencies yourself and fix them before the auditor comes on site. Part one of the standard is broken up into eight sections. These are the good manufacturing practices, including personnel, plants and grounds, sanitary operations, sanitary facilities, and controls. Equipment and utensils, processing, warehousing, and defect action. Part two varies by state, and they will be specific to each state requirements. The first section of the standard covers GMP for personnel, plants and grounds, and sanitary operations. GMP for personnel includes disease control and cleanliness. Personnel with illnesses, sores, and wounds may not come in contact with the food, cannabis product, cannabis contact surfaces, or packaging by exclusion from the product or by covering the infected area or both. Personnel must also report each situation to a supervisor. Hygienic practices must also be implemented by all persons working in direct contact with the product. Let's take a closer look at the requirements for maintaining cleanliness. Maintaining cleanliness includes requirements for wearing outer garments suitable to the operation. This would include aprons and uniforms if necessary. Appropriate hand washing before starting work, absence from workstation, or any other time hands become soiled or contaminated uh, must be implemented. There's also a requirement for a jewelry policy. This would be removing all unsecured jewelry or having it covered. Typically, this means only wearing plain wedding bands that are permitted. Uh, and the operation that have a glove policy must be that the gloves remain intact, clean, and in san sanitary conditions when handling product. Gloves would need to be changed and disposed of before work, when torn, when contaminated, or absent from a workstation. This also would include if the operation has a requirement for hair nets, hat, uh, beard nets, hats, or or other. How are they being maintained and tracked? And are personal belongings allowed to be worn? And if so, how are they also being uh, cleaned and maintained? Sections four, five, and six, co six cover sanitary facilities and controls, equipment and utensils, and processes and controls. Sanitary facilities cover water supply requirements, plumbing, sewage disposal, dis toilet facilities, and washing facilities. Equipment and utensils section goes into detail that all plant equipment and utensils must be designed of such a material that it can be adequ adequately cleaned and maintained against allergen cross contact and contamination. Processes and control requirements include quality control procedures so that food is suitable for human consumption and adequate precautions are taken so that allergen cross contact or product contamination does not occur. Finally, uh, section six outlines the manufacturing operations. Let's take a closer look at that section.
sorry, we're going to take a closer section look at section five equipment and utensils. The requirements that all equipment and utensils used in manufacturing, processing, packing, or holding need to avoid adulteration with lubricants, fuel, metal fragments, or contaminated water. Consideration must be given to how the equipment is installed in the facility. Can it be moved and taken apart for adequate cleaning? Or is there enough space around the equipment for pop proper cleaning of both the equipment and the space? All food contact surfaces must be corrosion resistant and made of non-toxic materials. The surface must not degrade when contacted with the product or cleaned with chemicals or sanitizers. Finally, product contact surfaces must be maintained to protect from food allergens or any other source. Section seven includes the warehouse and distribution requirements, while section eight details defect action levels. Defect action level states the operation must utilize quality control operations that reduce natural or unavoidable product defects to the lowest level feasible. This includes adulterated food. Adulterated food is the food that is generally unpure, unsafe, or unwholesome. Referring to section seven for warehousing distribution must protect against cross-contamination and biological, chemical, and physical contamination. Consideration should be given to warehousing areas. How are finished products and raw materials stored? What other materials are in the warehouse? What is the layout of the facility and the process flow? Could contamination occur from other products or persons? Is temperature control required and how is it monitored? These are all aspects of warehousing that must be considered in order to prevent cannabis safety problems. The last section of the standard is specifically state requirements. This will vary by state and scope. The specific rules are not outlined in the standard. Instead, they are listed in the auditor's checklist. All cannabis safety clients will receive a copy of the auditor's checklists in their welcome letter prior to the audit. Currently, we're offering a free PJRFSI Canvas Safety Standard download on our website. You can access it in the following link or by going, or by going to the Canvas Safety Standard on our website. I want to thank everyone for their attendance today for the webinar. I'm happy to stay and take any questions. You are welcome to type the questions in the question box, uh, or if you do not think of anything now, you can reach out to us at customer service at pjrfsi.com at any time with any, if, if you'd like some follow-up information. I know one of the questions we always get is, is if the slides and webinar will be able to be accessed later? And the, the answer is yes, we will be uploading uh, the slides in the webinar to our website, which you will then be able to access after the webinar. I'll leave the chat box open for a few more minutes, but I just want to say thank you for your time today. And if you would like, you can always contact me by email or by phone. Well, thank you everybody. I don't see any uh, questions right now, uh, but again, you have my contact information. Uh, so I'm gonna close the webinar. Have a great day.